Hi, I'm Debbie Stoddhart, founder and coordinator of the Alternative ASEAN Network on Burma, ASEAN Burma. I'm also Secretary General of FIDH, the International Federation for Human Rights. Um, I wanted to talk about how ASEAN, um, in, in the lead up to the ASEAN Australia Summit, how we need to be aware of the challenges in ASEAN and to ensure that Australian engagement, whether it's diplomatic, political or economic, does not benefit from human rights violations in, in Southeast Asia and does not provide the means and motivation for repressive regimes and horrible companies in this region to behave even more badly than they already are. Uh, when we talk about corporate capture, corporate capture by countries from the north, transnational corporations and local large companies, crony companies which have grown because of political connections or because they were started and run by former rulers of the country, including the military leaders of Burma, we already start to see this is a poisonous mix which causes huge problems for local people. Crony capitalism and the, with the collusion and support and motivation provided by the opportunities of, uh, of, of collaborating with transnational co companies has been one of the um, push factors for widespread land grabbing in Burma, Myanmar. Most of you are already aware of the unfolding genocide, previously euphemistically called a, a ethnic cleansing or um, a, a communal violence. Uh, you know that a million people have been pushed out of Burma within the past few months because they were Muslims and because they are Rohingya in Rakhine State. What you may not know is that since 2012, when the violence first, the, race, the latest wave of violence first spiked, when it first started, uh, there are actually three economic and special economic zones being built in Rakhine State. In Chaopiu, the uh, Chinese government and Chinese corporations are engaged in building a state-of-the-art special economic zone incorporates, uh, incorporating seaport, airport and a three-in-one pipeline comprom uh, comprising a, a railway, a gas pipeline and an oil pipeline that will cut across Burma into, um, into um, uh, Yunnan province in interior China. That's a $10 billion project built on land that was emptied by racist violence. Not to be outdone, China's uh, big rival, India, is building the Sitwe Special Economic Zone. Sitwe is the capital of Rakhine or Arakan State. And last year, um, just a week after the latest wave of um, so-called clearance operations where the military burnt down thousands of homes and committed atrocities against thousands of Rohingya people, um, the state government of Rakhine State org, uh, basically announced just a week after this latest wave of violence started that they were building an economic zone under the control of the state government in Maungdo near the Bangladesh border. Further up north in Kachin and Shan State, we are seeing um, the sixth year of war going on. And that war has also featured similar atrocities against Kachin and other ethnic people in Kachin State and Shan State. And we, let's not forget that what we're seeing also is a competition, basically a war to gain control of valuable agricultural land, uh, natural resources like uranium, uh, emeralds, gold, uh, amber, and jade. So uh, we are actually s seeing that companies and uh, business interests of military leaders are also part of this mix of the violence in Burma. In C Cambodia, a few years ago, uh, uh, FIDH and other human rights organizations lodged a note with the International Criminal Court basically calling for an investigation and a review of the widespread and systematic land grabs unfolding in Cambodia in the past few decades. Basically, it's our assertion that the widespread and systematic nature of land grabbing and the violence being perpetrated on local communities amount to um, crimes against humanity. 
and these land grabs are still going on. Along with that, what we have seen in Cambodia is a massive crackdown on opposition parties and on civil society and independent media and also against labor activists. So we've seen a model where um, many corporation, corporations and states you know, from the north said we're going to help Cambodia develop so that they can get beyond the violent legacy of genocide in Cambodia. But what and how it's been done, the package of aid and trade basically has not addressed the massive inequalities in terms of uh, the livelihoods, in terms of uh, politics, in terms of power between what is now a gangster regime and the people of Cambodia. So uh, I can go on and on about Malaysia, about Thailand, about Indonesia and so on. But what I want to say is we should remember that people come before profit. Australia's engagement, whether it's diplomatic, political or economic, needs to put people before profits. I know it's hard for you to hear this, especially when we know about the human rights violations that have taken place in Manus and other places where asylum keep, uh, seekers are being kept, mainly as a collaboration between a very expensive and dangerous collaboration between state and corporations where where human rights are being systematically violated um, against human rights violations targeting a, a, a group of people that had already fled because of human rights violations in their home state i know it's difficult for me to for you to say for you to hear, hey, Australia needs to take its responsibilities abroad because it hasn't been taking its responsibilities domestically. But this is the reality. Australia is a member of the OECD and therefore Australian state and corporations need to comply with the OECD guidelines on responsible business conduct. Australia is supposed to have a national action plan on business and human rights. And that national action plan should clearly incorporate a very clear guidance and obligations on extraterritorial obligations. So we do need to have detailed commitments to ensure that Australian companies and the Australian government actually complies with human rights standards, not just um, prosecuting individuals for committing human rights violations such as child sexual exploitation overseas, but then not taking a company or uh, an agency to account when they are also guilty of doing that. Australia needs to take uh, ex have extra duty of care in its interactions with ASEAN that it does not benefit directly or indirectly from human rights abuses and by that I mean labor abuses, other hum civil and political rights abuses, economic, social and cultural rights abuses and also any abuses that have negative impacts on the environment. Australia needs to um, also understand that uh, they cannot just have orgasms over the, per the perceived profits that will come to Australia because they're engaging with ASEAN. They need to actually have a very clear head and very um, uh, act in a very rational manner because when human rights violations happen in Southeast Asia, that means there's more asylum seekers. So you, even if you don't care about human rights and you care about keeping the asylum seekers away, you better behave yourself and make sure that you do not contribute directly or indirectly and you do not benefit directly or indirectly from human rights abuses that also have impacts on the environment. Finally, I want to say that Australia at the UN level has not been helpful at all in our quest and our struggle to bring about a binding treaty on transnational corporations and other business enterprises. In October, it will be the fourth session of the Intergovernmental Working Group that's supposed to elaborate on the content of such a treaty on TNCs. Australia and countries of the North have either openly expo uh, opposed it or not have, have been grudgingly engaged in the process. I hope that Australia and activists from Australia will be there front and center to promote and to ensure that a binding treaty on transnational corporations and other business enterprises really puts human rights and access to justice for those who have suffered abuses at the hands of businesses right at the core of this treaty. Thank you.